Hi, my name is Jenny Paul. I'm an actor, producer, director in New York City, and my most recent project is called That Reminds Me, a series. It's a sitcom that's sort of modern family meets arrested development, and it's at www.thatreminds-me-the-series.com. Hi, I'm Isabella Peralta. I'm a producer as well as a director and mostly assistant director. I am currently running a theater festival right now. I'm also the production manager for Green Card, the new musical. And I'm also just started up a new film company, so you're going to check that out later. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chelsea B. Lockie. I'm a director and an actor. My most recent project is The Cold Trap, Studio 1945 Productions, of which I'm also a co-founder. You can find more information on the movie on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash coldtrapmovie. Hi, I'm Natalia Plaza. I'm an actor, comedian, writer, producer. You can check out my latest sketch that's going to come out soon called The Sofa Bed Whisperer. And I'm also acting in a film that's coming out soon called Before the Court. And if you want to see more of my stuff, you can just check me out at nataliaplaza.com. Hi, I'm Natalie Romero. I am a producer here in the city. Uh, I work under the Vladarn Company, so we are just putting out so many fun, great feature documentaries. Um, so please be on the lookout for The Hurt Business, which will be in theaters this year. You can also go on Vimeo to go see C.T. Fletcher, My Magnificent Obsession, Believe with Kai Green, and also Jeremy Scott, um, The People's Designer. So go out there, check us out, check me out, um, and hopefully much more to come. Roundtable web series. I'm your host Victoria Ivy King. I'm a director, producer, and founder of Cine59. Okay, so talk to me about double standards about being a woman. So, first, what does it mean to be a woman? When you hear, when you say, really, I am a woman, what does that mean to you? As well as, are there certain things that you feel are just unfair that guys can do that you can't as a as a woman, or you feel sort of shamed? on doing, like scratching something. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you know, <laughs> my crotch or get in there, I will dig, I will do whatever I need to do if I have to alleviate a niche. Especially yeah. in the groin area. I don't care. <laughs> I, okay, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to go to like a nice event. Yeah. Or, you know, like, I'm not crazy. But, um, but, you know, if I need to, if I'm like out, if I'm doing something or on my way somewhere and, and something is just not right or my underwear is going on my ass, which happens all the time, mm. I will get mm. in there. Mm. And I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not like, sh I'm just not shy about that because I'm like, I shouldn't have to be shy about that. I think you have to, you have to. There's one thing yeah. about being, like, you could be presentable and then there's, then there's, like, that's one yeah. thing. Or you want to be presentable, that's fine. But there's there's a very big difference between women at home. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. by ourselves totally. or whoever we're with. Or by our, by totally. home And who we are on the street. I mean, mm -hmm. we get home and it's yeah. just completely different. That is reality. We get home, yeah. lights open, we're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I truly don't understand men who don't understand that women are, like, complete messes when they're at yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. Like, I remember I used to go to camp and, like, they would do a uh, cleanup cabin and the girls would always lose. Like, they would never have to clean this cabin. And the girls are... Clean up cabin? So, like, we had to clean up your cabin. The men would always win. The women wouldn't. And, and that's understandable. because What do you guys have to do? Just, like, pull up the sheet? Yeah, basically. Just got their ragged, cum-filled shirts oh! off the floor. <laughs> Throw their cum rags out but the window. women, we have hair spray. We have, you know, we like to look good, but we also... Sorry. You know, it's just everyone's different. I think people have this stereotypical idea that, you know... I think women are the creators. I really do. I think mm, they create yeah. everything. You know, they create peace. They create a pathway to. We create people. We create people. <laughs> yes. We create life. This universe. Yes. Yeah. yes. You know. I think and that's, sorry. I'm yeah. totally going. I think that's one of like one of my biggest arguments. It's like, but I made you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I haven't made anybody yet. Yeah. So the guys that are like, yeah. just like putting you down. I'm like, yeah. but you yeah. came. From us. <laughs> like, how, I'm just yeah. confused. Yeah. I'm looking at you. I'm just completely like, how do you, you wouldn't yeah, be alive. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's like that whole idea of like, with dad, I'm not as fair to my dad at all. <laughs> my mom yells at me, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, just don't yell at me. But yes, double standards, hell yeah. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely double yeah. standards. I mean, and, and, and just what we're talking about right now, like just personal 
a regular day to day, and mm-hmm. as soon as you walk into that office, what mm-hmm. you, what you can say, how you should say it, that's mm-hmm. a really yes. good one, and where you can go, like mm-hmm. with being a woman. I, I work with all men. I work mm-hmm. with all men. Yeah. And, ooh, it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. Tell me about that, because the next thing I want to talk about is sexism within the industry mm-hmm. and the workplace. So, how many times do you encounter sexism, or do you just? It depends on who you're working with and 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 the kind. Like we're talking about straight men you know, because we can't even like we could talk about women just putting mm-hmm. you down like that. That's mm-hmm. obviously yeah. there. Women that are on top, women that have made it. You know, mm-hmm. they want to hold on to their places and they're dominant, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like we get it. But um, when it comes to men, I think in 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 my field, um, when you're working with a lot of guys that are like go getters, you know, mm-hmm. the, when you're working with the sharks, as I mm-hmm. say. Um, it is totally a who you're supposed to be as, as a woman. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I get to work with various types of people. I think when you're a little bit younger, you've got yeah. like the, the guy, the dudes that yeah. get it, you know, yeah. the, the dudes that like understand yeah. feminism, the dudes that understand, you know, mm-hmm. you can work as right, you know, just yeah. as hard. But then there's the guys on top that are definitely just going to just oh, spit split it, it up. I've, I've gotten it just yeah. like spit in my face that I am basically less. Mm-hmm. Than whoever it is, and I've it's been you know done <coughs> in front of talent, in front of coworkers, oh, whatever. Yeah. And you just have to you know give a good, yeah. a good fuck off, and then you just keep <laughs> doing your job. Yeah, the sexism it, in the workplace comes in so many different ways. Oh, it yeah. really also depends on like who you are as a person. Like you can stop it from the beginning, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, I don't like any of that shit. I'm mm-hmm. your fucking boss. Like, don't play that. Mm-hmm. Not with me." And then. They'll joke around with you, this and that, and then they'll start to flirt with you just on the oh. basis of, like, maybe not even being attractive, just the fact that you're a woman, I'm a guy, I'm going to joke around flirt with you. Like, mm-hmm. they don't understand that that's... Would you flirt with your other co-workers? Would you do that? Would you do this? It's like, it's not appropriate workplace behavior, and I think that there's this idea of, like, oh, but, you know, we're different genders that can slide, that can go through. No, it's, it's a workplace environment, so you should respect it no matter what. I think it's a matter of, I don't even think it's a matter of just like saying, no, stop it. I think because they're just going to do it to someone else, you know? Yeah. They're going to do it to someone who doesn't have the confidence to say, mm-hmm. I'm not, a, I don't like that. Yeah. I think one of the biggest, uh, I guess, um, things for me is, I, as a director, mm-hmm. I can honestly say I haven't encountered that much sexism mm-hmm. yet at this point in my career, at least. And I know um, some, I think it, it comes no matter what. Um, but I know what I, I don't, I don't know if I should have to do this. I don't know, I'm kind of fighting with myself about saying this or not. But to me, it's like, I don't, I've never considered myself a female director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I've never said I am a female director. I'm, I'm a totally. director. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. That's my occupation. And I, I do feel that's how I walk into a room mm-hmm. as well. So I'm not saying the burden is entirely on women for how you view yourself. I'm not saying that sexism doesn't exist. But I think um, what's important to me in my life is leading by example of, of mm-hmm. being a director and being a great director, mm-hmm. trying to, and, and telling stories, compelling stories that I really care about that could get on maybe the same mm-hmm. list as a bunch of men who have directed you know, something as well, but but I would, I'd rather be on the list with great directors. Yeah, that yes. makes sense. Male, female, like yeah. I'm inspired by both male and female directors, but I do think it is nice for women who, uh, who want to pursue it, who maybe don't think that they can because of, you know, because of whatever, seeing women that are doing it mm-hmm. is, is really important. So, um, I don't know, but at the same time, you know, I have experienced a little bit. I was working on a project once where, um, where a man made a woman uncomfortable and I went to the it's just it, I thought of it when you were speaking about how it's not so much people like in our generation as much mm-hmm. as sometimes the people mm-hmm. you know on top uh, I went to the powers that be about it and I said you know he he did something it made her feel really uncomfortable and he goes yeah but you know mm-hmm. women these days they'll say that almost anything is sexual harassment believe yeah. I've been working under you <clears throat> for yeah. six weeks yeah. wow. you know and that was that was the I haven't yeah. worked there since but <laughs> I just I thought that was so interesting that like that perspective came from a generation of uh, almost anything with it's sexual definitely, I, think it's a gen- I, mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't just put my my hand on the cutter for this one but it's definitely a generation thing um I mean I get to work with guys every day that kind of like push me 
you know, up. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, oh, they like, nice. yeah. totally, like, see somebody, mm-hmm. yeah. and then they, and I get to work with great mm-hmm. people, not as a woman, get to mm-hmm. be, you know, part of the team, mm-hmm. um, despite it being male-dominant. And you have, like, from every age kind of thing, age group, up to their 30s. Mm-hmm. But you do meet people that will just, no matter what, you know, just in my years mm-hmm. will just impose that upon you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. impose the that that idea of of well you're just like you said you're mm-hmm. a woman i'm a man yeah sex mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's the only relationship will ever have so it's like even mm-hmm. if it's in a very you know simple way which mm-hmm. is like you know yeah. it's like sometimes it's like i when you're in a certain position you've got to learn how to just brush it Mm-hmm. And yeah, so true. true. But it's sometimes you gotta kind of like open up the legs and be like, "Hey, yeah. Yeah. what's up?" Yeah. Because yeah. it's not happening, yeah. and you gotta be like, like, just like bring it down yeah. to that. But don't confuse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. this mm-hmm. yeah. for anything. Like else. the assumption exactly. that because you're a woman on set or because you're a woman here, like you're you're gonna have to sleep with somebody mm-hmm. yeah. because you're a woman in here. You have to flirt, or you have that's to flirt. You have to flirt with somebody. It's math, yeah. so maybe yeah. it'll be me. But like the right. assumption that it has to yeah. be at least somebody. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what? Exactly. Why not? Do you have a boyfriend? No. You know, but exactly. <laughs> but I don't right. want to fuck today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Not with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or anyone here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh I think it's I. There's um. I think when I started out, and I say when I'm started out, it's like definitely very early in the career. But there's this idea, and I always tell women this. I think women, um, in the industry, let's talk about the industry, tend mm-hmm. to, and it's fantastic, and I love it, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I aspire to be able to create a group of women that can work together in tandem and create awesome mm-hmm. films just because we can, not yes, because we're can. women, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. But I work <clears throat> with all guys and I enjoy it because the way I see it is, and I've always, you know, at, at the beginning I always try to be, you know, as tough as them and as mm-hmm. cool as them and, and work as hard mm-hmm. and, or whatever, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's because you've got to learn. And I think that's what women kind of like in this craze of feminism, we're like, we all have to stick mm-hmm. together. Yeah. And yeah. we all have to do this together mm-hmm. always. And it's like, no, you really don't. Exactly. I can work with guys and I can be like, oh, okay. These are the guys on top. These are the guys that know where they're going. Let me learn from yeah. them and take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And take that experience yeah. and take that knowledge yeah. with me so that I can continue to create mm-hmm. things for me and for my team or just for the damn world, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's very but true. I, you just want to learn from people. Yeah, I would yeah. just call that being good at your job. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, it's so true, Natalie. It's a strong work ethic because it's like as soon as you show that you can work, that you can pay attention, that you can do things above and beyond, mm-hmm. people don't care about your gender anymore. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. really true. Yeah. Yes. They'll just yes. care about you. She can get the job done. Yeah. I'm going to hire her. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing that matters. Like I was brought on to this um, feature as assistant director and I have to admit, a lot of the guys, it was all guys, and I've worked well with guys, I don't mind, I, it's also a thing where it's like, you want to work with the best. Mm-hmm. And also the two other girls that were brought onto it were like, total, total boss ass bitches, I love those kind of women, I love strong yeah. women. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit, there was a couple women that did come on as PA in those other jobs, and it's not making fun of them, it's just like you did kind of move yourself away from them, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they didn't have that same energy, they weren't there yet in the sense of confidence level mm-hmm. of yes. knowing what they, yeah exactly yes. aggression mm-hmm. it really is it's that male side aggression that mm-hmm. you kind of have to just get mm-hmm. you yeah. know you, you kind of have to it's adventurous it, it, it is yeah. you know yeah. it's just that hunger it's that pure mm-hmm. hunger of I want to get this done there's this amazing guy who went to uh, I forgot his name he went to CCNY which is my alma mater and he said this amazing advice and he's like play their game before you can start your own. Mm-hmm. And he was a Latin actor and he had to do the typical drug addicts, you know, mm-hmm. the guy getting arrested. Mm-hmm. And later on, he ended up writing a movie and doing it with John Leguizamo. That's awesome. wow. Yeah, just That's because amazing. of his connections, like yeah. just because he yeah. worked hard and people saw that. I had, oh my God, well, Izzy and I went to school together. Yeah. I, had a, I had a professor and she was a communication director, worked in the industry and she was absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I'm forgetting her name. Obviously, <laughs> like, I remember her saying this was this is directed to race. This was directed to whatever heritage, whatever mm-hmm. your background. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you got the job because of the color of your skin. Because obviously, we all mm-hmm. know that you know yeah. companies want to diversify their mm-hmm. yeah. their industry or their companies yeah. to make them look good on paper." Exactly. Yeah. She's like, "I'm sorry, you got the job because of that, and you're upset. Take that, go to the top, 
and just be successful. Exactly. That that's mm-hmm. your in. You take mm-hmm. your in how it's given to you. Yeah. And that and I think that's that has to deal with with either being a female or whatever. You, yeah. if, if you got if you got in the door because hey, you look good that day. Okay, I'm not gonna take offense to that yeah. because I agree. I do look good today. Yeah. Damn. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then you're like, but I can also work my my ass off, yeah. and I'm gonna work longer and harder than everybody here. Exactly. And now you know that like that, that's it. I'm gonna get hired because yeah. I get the job done. Yeah. It's your longevity. That's how exactly. your voice is going to be heard, yeah. and mm-hmm. you can influence a lot more getting in the door than you can just knocking on the exactly. outside because yeah. you don't you know mm-hmm. want to get the job for looking yeah. good that day. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Large part of, and it's interesting. This came up last in the last couple of um, people. It, it's not about anything other than the confidence, and I think that's mm-hmm. what women sort of struggle mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. coming out of school, coming out of you know. I, I'm primarily an actor, mm-hmm. and you know, you talk about you know lookism and things like that. And a lot of it actually is that, but a lot of it is actually a confidence thing. Yeah. And it's you come out of a world that tells you, oh, well, you know, you're going to get to this and they're going to reject you because you're not pretty enough or you're not thin enough or you're not this mm-hmm. enough or you're not that enough. And really when it comes down to it is if you do you, mm-hmm. then everybody and their mother respects that. Mm-hmm. And yes. I think that's where women come in at a disadvantage to situations like you were mm-hmm. talking about. It's not because they wouldn't be just as cool as everybody yeah. else or even just as aggressive. It's mm-hmm. they haven't learned that game and instead of jumping in and going, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to learn it and I'm going to play it and I'm going to fake it until I make it. Mm-hmm. They go in and they go uh, uh. Mm-hmm. And and being one of those people, mm-hmm. not anymore. I've been in the business long enough that now I'm like, okay, fuck it. Yeah. But <laughs> but but you know, there's a there's a tentativeness that comes with the assumption that there's going to be some sort of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Disadvantage, yeah. and there, there doesn't have to be one necessarily. There might be, but you'll find that out at some yeah. point anyway. So yeah. you might as well assume the best and go for it. And I think, you know, I've worked with directors that are that are that are over coddly to me because I'm a woman. And mm-hmm. I've worked with female direct male directors. I've worked with female directors that treat me like, you know, tough shit because I'm a woman. Mm-hmm. And you know, and and none of it needs to be anything if we were just communicating on the level of. I'm an artist, you're an artist, we want to make work together, mm-hmm. then it is what it is. So everybody has their different ways of handling it. And I think the biggest thing is to come in knowing that that what you bring to the table is valuable mm-hmm. and just doing what you do. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think that a lot of this stuff just goes away. Now, some of it is not going to go away because some of it's not internal, some mm-hmm. of it's external, mm-hmm. but some of it will. Yeah, I think women, women are, it's not a bad thing to be sensitive. It's not a bad oh, thing to be emotional, but um, it does m- make us, in certain cases, and for the women that do um, embrace that kind mm-hmm. of like emotion, um, it does put us in the, in the situation where we are constantly assuming and we're constantly lacking that confidence of just saying, F it. Just go through the door, and if you fall on your face, fucking, you know, you get yeah. back up, and that's get okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. completely okay because people are failing all around you. Just join yeah. the bunch, and then just yeah. be the person that stands mm-hmm. back up. So mm-hmm. it's it's that whole. There's this, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that this with with every man, but there's this type of fearlessness, at least in our industry, mm-hmm. of men get really cocky when they know one thing and since they know one the one thing they're like I'm the first one here I mean have you ever worked with like, like a, yeah, a, yeah. A, a, kind of like a new director they think they know their shit yeah. and they just mm-hmm. like want to keep on going but damn that's good I love him because you know what I mean people may, might not like him but he's there mm-hmm. and you're not and I think that's something mm-hmm. that my mom would always tell me I remember when I was like before I got yeah. into anything and I would just look at people like oh see people on television I'm like ah oh, mm-hmm. yeah. what the f- Fudge is she on television? Like mm-hmm. she's she doesn't have that much talent, yeah. or she doesn't whatever. And my mom would turn around. She's like, "Well, she's there, and you're not. So what are you doing?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just that whole thing of okay, so then I need that confidence to to not even say I'm the best, mm-hmm. but I'm the person here, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna fake it till I fucking make it. Sure. I, and that's just what you have to do because mm-hmm. I mean the industry's so diversified right now. You yeah. just gotta figure out. You know, you're gonna work with so many different people. You just gotta mm-hmm. like make yourself whatever you got to be at the moment mm-hmm. to get through whatever door. Um, but yeah, confidence is key. It's yeah. so true. Confidence yeah. has gotten me, I think, confidence has gotten me every single job that I've ever done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Confidence and awareness of, of what you're good at. Like, I love the fake it until you make it. I think yeah. that's, that's absolutely true. But also just like, um, 
you know, like you were saying, it's not always easy, and some people don't inherently maybe have that confidence, and that's okay, but awareness is key, is like knowing your strengths and being willing to admit what you're good at instead of apologizing for it or, or you know, hiding it out of, out of fear or whatever. But, um, I mean, like, I don't know, even just, even just speaking with you, like there is a certain amount of confidence that you project, even just talking about feminism, but it's you, like, you know how you feel about it, like you're mm-hmm. confident in that. So I think constantly like assessing what you are aware of, what you do believe in, what's important to you, and asking yourself in a job if that aligns, you know, mm-hmm. and if it's worth it, therefore do you pursue, do you move forward, mm-hmm. do you say like, yes, you know, I can, I can move forward with this because I do know what I'm doing. And if you don't, just having the courage to say, fuck it, I'll pretend I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know? Or saying to the person, <laughs> sure. I don't know, let me go find out. Sure. Yes. Or open yeah. Google and just open it. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Google. The yeah. Google. I noticed mm-hmm. when I, like, friends. Friends. I, when I first came out into this industry, when I made a mistake, I would dwell on it for yeah. hours. Me I would, too. I would be like, it's because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm incompetent, this and that. <laughs> When you just put in your mindset, I'm just gonna keep going. You know, yeah. I'm just gonna keep going. Now, when there's a mistake that happens on a film set, mine or someone else, it's like it happened. Mm-hmm. Yes. It happened. You just what can you do? Mm-hmm. You have to move forward. That's so and important that's, yeah. to say. I'm so yeah. glad you said that. I feel like yeah. that's so important for people to hear mm-hmm. is that nobody starts out in the industry exactly. perfect. Yes. So, you know what yes. I mean? Because like, especially when you do reach that level of confidence, or you can walk into a room and really mm-hmm. feel like you know what you're doing. It seems like you've been doing it forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but just like hearing somebody say, "Yeah, I work." in this and I used to stay up nights terrified yeah. that I did something mm-hmm. wrong like that's something everybody goes yeah. to and that's so real and so nobody it. ends in the industry perfect either I haven't experienced really I've been actually really lucky in you know professionally I haven't really experienced any sexism or you know feeling less than or anything like that mm-hmm. um, not with directors or castmates or anything but I have to say I did get away from it uh, I think that's important to know that if you're feeling it, if you don't like it, just remove yourself from that <clears throat> from that environment. Mm-hmm. Like I started in improv comedy, and I've been doing that for many years. And I have to say that once I moved to New York, I was like, oh, these are my people. You know, like, <laughs> wow, I actually feel like I count. You know, I feel yeah. so visible. I feel so present and powerful. And, um, you know, but back in the day when, you know, it was early and, you know, usually improvisers are very young and stuff like that, but definitely you always get cut down because no matter what you create, it was always like, oh, well, um, you get, you know, you get come on you or, you know, like someone (laughs) in a scene, like someone comes on you, which is usually a guy or, uh, you get made into a prostitute, uh, or you get made into, um, you know, like the dumb girlfriend or you get made into, and you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's just little scenes that we do and they're jokes, it's improv, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, it's the imagination mm-hmm. that's just uncensored and coming yeah. forth. Yeah. And if that's all I am, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's that, over, the, over the years, it became very disturbing to me and I, I left that environment because uh, it doesn't happen here in New York, but, um, but that's probably the strongest example I have of experiencing, you know, misogyny. In yeah. a creative space, I think in creative, it, we we you, you work off of stereotypes. I mean, I think mm-hmm. you think it's said in films a lot, like every film's the same kind of thing, or we're working yeah. off of the same story, and it's the mm-hmm. same thing with with characters. And mm-hmm. it, like we've already talked about, we're moving out of that. Mm-hmm. However, there are very very solid um, stereotypical characters that filmmakers or writers feel like they have to be in the story. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to have at least yeah. one slut. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, yeah. do we really have to have just yeah. one set? I mean, like, yeah, but it could be a man or a woman. <laughs> How <laughs> innocent the other girl is. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, it's just. Right. They have to balance oh, each other like, out. Balance each other out. Competitive. But different just, people. Yeah, just yeah. cast 10 slides. Exactly. Make yeah. 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 I would watch yeah. that. I know. I would watch that. that. <laughs> But I think that that goes to show you just like how powerful, and I love talking about it, how powerful media is. Because Mm -hmm. now that we're moving out of that, women and young women who are just all about that Kim Kardashian makeup and Mm -hmm. that, you know, like the whole uh, stereotype will hopefully move out of it. But I think that men in the industry, based off of what they know from their personal lives and based off of the women that they are in relationships or sleeping mm-hmm. with or whatever, mm-hmm. um, that's what they're basing kind of what they create or or the environment that they create in, in whatever situation they're in. And that's what fucks us up. Sorry. 
<laughs> because because you're you're immediately being seen as oh you do this like this is who you are I already know who you are and then that's why I know how this is what girls you. do mm-hmm. yeah this is so, you so now this is what yeah. girls do Good. so okay. I've definitely been yeah. in a situation where where I've where I've had somebody say in front of people kind of like I had to handle the situation because the situation was getting out of control or whatever um, just because I just wanted it to end. And when the big guy came over, or when we'll say the big guy comes over, he says, oh, well, I see you had to bring, uh, you know, I'll say it's super vulgar. The, I think the term was you had to either bring a woman here to kind of, like, handle it. And I think mm-hmm. what he did use, the term that he did use, oh, you had to bring a slit here to handle a man's job kind of thing. So it's like I get, I've gotten that many times in the past because you work with producers, you work with guys that are cutthroat, that mm-hmm. are that are screwing people over, you know, to a certain extent, like that are yeah. really have to get nitty gritty to get a job done. And I respect yeah. that as a producer. Mm-hmm. I respect guys that are just so tough, yeah. and they just like because they make the fucking films that are big that you yeah. like that you enjoy. I'm mm-hmm. cursing so much, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but it's that you said that you removed yourself. Sometimes you just. So at least like for and me, can you? Sometimes, that's, that's yeah, the thing. So it's like, like sometimes like what if you can't? I'm like I don't yourself. want to remove myself. Yeah. you know why? Mm-hmm. Because you're an idiot. <laughs> like, yeah. Because because I yes, think, you're saying that. But I'm a remover. I just yeah. remove myself. No, I think that I think yeah. you can remove yourself in those situations, but in different forms. Like yeah. what I do after a long work day. I remember there's been many times when I was working on this, on a couple of films where it's like you're so stressed out, you hate everyone in the world, mm-hmm. but you want to do what you love. I go to my mom. I go to my family. I go to what I love to do. I go to the mm-hmm. bathroom sometimes and let out a tear. Mm-hmm. Or I just go somewhere I know where I can have peace and quiet, mm-hmm. you know? There's so many different ways to remove yourself. If it involves going to a different state where you're more appreciated, do that. If it involves going to your mom who's going to cook you food and make you feel the most appreciated, <laughs> do that. There's yeah. so many different methods besides quitting. Yeah. yeah. Besides yeah. just fighting back because sometimes yeah. you can't fight back it's true these are the big guys you but know? And it's like I have found myself in a great position where I can I get, <laughs> yeah. I get, to, the, <laughs> I get to like they get it they know they, they do call me the feminist which is very annoying but it's yeah. because it's amazing to me that that you know when I think in, in with well, the difference but when 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 we, women work together we still respect men and, and mm-hmm. we can respect each other and that's fine but when men work with each other they're just all being guys yeah. all the time and then yeah. when they are interacting with women the few that will be in the industry mm-hmm. um okay they'll work on, on a kind of like corporate level but mm-hmm. when they're going out they're just going out on dates yeah. so they're so the women that they do know are very yeah. over sexualized in a certain sense because yeah. they're trying to achieve mm-hmm. something um but so do you think that these people should keep being supported because if you don't remove yourself you're kind of indirectly supporting that behavior if you let them know See, if you, like, if you're in a position it, where you can yeah. let them know, that's fine. I think I've it goes back into play their game before you can play yours. I mean, if you have to get yelled, if you have to get taunted at, yeah. if you know at the end of the day that you're going to be something, and if you work hard for it, yeah. who cares? That guy's going to die in the next few years. Yeah, he's going to die in the next few years. You're still young. You're still looking amazing. Yep, you know, yeah. just do what you do. I've come. I've yeah. become very comfortable and happy with the idea. With the people that are most annoying will probably die. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I still have yeah. a good 30, 20 years ahead yeah. of me. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You're gonna die no. when you're like forty. No, no, no. no. So it's, it's like it's that's an idea of. Yes, I know what you're saying. It's like, okay, are you supporting these guys that are doing? I mean, because like, I remove myself. They will, when when they shit will, like that happens, yeah. I'm just like, I don't support you. I don't support you. I don't support this. So I'm out. Mm-hmm. And you needed me to be here. You mm-hmm. needed me to do this. I don't like it. Goodbye. Yeah. But the problem with that is that you might remove yourself, but that right. doesn't necessarily change no. the, the change the yeah. situation. It's yeah. not going to modify the way that they would interact with the next person that's going to replace you. So I feel like it is a bit of yeah. that and it is a bit of that. There yeah. is a need to remove yourself, but also I think it's strong. It, it, it's it's a it's a sort of um, a note to your character if you're able to be in that situation. Number one, say that, it's, that you don't like it. At least speak up for yourself. Yeah. But stay there and know that you can deal with that mm-hmm. because... It, See, it sounds like an abusive boyfriend to me. That just sounds true. like an abusive I mean, the boyfriend. Thing is, I think there's also different options. I don't yeah. know. If you were if yeah. you were being 
like just like beating nice yeah. and like beating yeah. down every single day, like to the point that it's like the you're crying different. in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. terrible. Don't say because it's yes. not it's not good for you. But one thing that you've learned in the industry is that everybody is exactly. is dispensable. Mm-hmm. You know, I honestly, everybody can be yeah. switched out. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if it ruins your way of being, if you're truly yes. to yourself, like who am I as a person? Move, there you and go. you have that option to move to a state, yeah. this to this. If it for you it helps, like. I mean, there's many different options. You know, I've, I've been in this situation where it's like, I transferred to three different high schools because I'm like, I am not being looked on as a person here. I'm being looked at as a number. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been to film sets where I've gotten yelled at. And I'm like, this is making me feel degraded, but I'm also feeling like I'm going to do better nice. at this moment. I have that mm-hmm. option to continue forward. Mm-hmm. Or I have that option, you always have that option to just quit. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. no one's stopping you at the end of the day. And maybe something better will come along. But... It's that own choice, you know, I think it's just, I think your two different contrasting, like, opinions also show that many w- different women can take these different paths and mm-hmm. still achieve so much, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, a healthy amount of both in a sense, too, of, like, assessing, I think it's so important to ask yourself the question of, um, why does it matter? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And yes. that's, but the answer can vary, too. Mm-hmm. It matters because yeah. um, I care about the story. Mm-hmm. It matters because I'm. I need this to pay my rent. Yeah. Uh, it matters because this will lead me potentially to another job that's really yeah. going to matter. Yeah. Um, so I think assessing. Um, and I'm not saying like you made the abusive boyfriend analogy, which I think is hilarious. So I'm not saying like stay there even if you're being abused. <laughs> look, at, look at the level of intensity yeah. versus what you're getting from it, and yeah. ask yourself like, yes. does that worth equal it? worth it? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if it does, absolutely keep going.